He's one of the best scientific minds we have today. What's up guys, Human Carjack here, and today we're talking about orbital polishers. So this is the Bauer 7.5 amp uh, long throw random orbital polisher by Bauer. This video is not sponsored by Bauer, but I found out some pretty cool and interesting things about this uh, orbital polisher. So a lot of you may be familiar with Chemical Guys and Rupes, I, I think I'm saying that right, R-U-P-E-S. So those are pretty much the top of the line, uh, more so the Rupes, the top of the line random orbital uh, polishers that are available on the market. Now some of them can be quite expensive, especially the Rupes. The Rupes ranges anywhere between three to up to $500 while the Bauer over here is around $100. So after watching a couple of YouTube videos, this is a pretty affordable solution as opposed to getting those other uh, orbital polishers. And the reason why you might wanna get this over those is maybe you don't have the right budget for it or you don't polish your car too often. Now the thing that makes this a great alternative and you guys know that this channel is pretty much all about DIY and kind of taking things apart, uh, repairing things, things like that. Um, the, the reason why I like this is there's some little hacks that you can make this perform a lot better. So this has a six inch backing pad. So this black part over here, that's basically where your polishing pad would stick to. It's six inches. Uh, so that means that you'd have to have a polishing pad that's six inches or larger, preferably 6.5 to seven. Now that's great if you wanna cover a large surface area like a hood or something like that, or maybe the top of your vehicle. But when you're gonna go into the more intricate and smaller parts of the vehicle, it's a little bit harder to get into. So not only does a larger backing pad make it harder to get into the tighter spots, but it creates a little bit more vibration in the, in the, uh, the tool itself. So switching over to a smaller backing pad, like we have right over here, this is the Rupes five inch backing pad, uh, makes it also a little bit more stable. Now that's not the only thing that's really appealing about this tool to me. The thing is that the grease that came from the factory within the Bauer uh, random orbital polisher is pretty low quality grease, so it doesn't allow uh, certain, certain parts of the machine to operate the smoothest. So we have here some Lucas's white lithium grease, and uh, this is some higher quality grease and we're gonna go ahead and replace the existing grease with this. So pretty much with these three mods that you see here, we have $100 for the uh, Bauer Orbital Polisher itself. The lithium grease was about $15 for this tube, or I believe it was 12 actually, it was $12, $11 rather, $11 for this. And this Rupes backing pad was around $30. So basically you have a bargain Rupes. So after I go ahead and modify this tool, we're gonna go ahead and apply it to the vehicle. We're gonna go ahead and clean it down, give it a nice power wash, clay bar, everything. And last off, we're gonna hit it with the polisher. So the first thing I wanna do before we actually go ahead and take this apart is I wanna see if we could capture on camera, we're gonna slow it down and see with the original backing pad and the original grease, how this thing operates in terms of vibration and, uh, and stability. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on facing the camera this way. And uh, we're gonna put it on, let's say, uh, what's the medium setting? We're gonna put it on four. Yeah, we're gonna put it right in the middle on four, and then we're gonna turn it on over here. So I feel a decent amount of vibration on my hand, nothing too crazy, but we're gonna see if this grease makes a big difference in the backing pad. All right guys, so here it is. Here is the grease that comes inside the Bauer. So not a lot and it doesn't seem like it's too high quality. So we're gonna go ahead and kind of clean this out and put the new one in. All 
Alright, and after that we can go ahead and reassemble this uh, plastic piece. Just slide it on and put the plastic screws back on. Alright, and that's that. So we're going to go ahead and turn it on and see if there's any difference as far as the smoothness. So I'm going to go ahead and put it back on four. Plug it back in. All right, nothing I really feel uh, as far as like turning it on like and just doing it up in the air, but I'm sure that once we actually apply it to the vehicle, we're gonna get a little bit of a different feel. All right guys, so the car is clean and what I've done here is uh, we're on the rear uh, hatch of the car. So we're gonna go ahead and start off with this area because we got two big scratches here. The sun is kind of messing us up because we can't really see, but there's one, I, I actually can't even see it now because of the sun, but it's one, one scratch is somewhere over here. There's another one right over there. Yeah, that one you can kind of pick up. So yeah, so we might even just start with that one. All right, I think we'll do it like this. So I just want to show you guys what I'm using. So I have Chemical Guys All-in-One Polish and Sealant. Uh, this claims that it can take off uh, it's a, it's a one-step polish that removes swirls and scratches, so we're going to see how well we can remove the, the, those scratches that are already there. And uh, yeah, so let's give this a shot. So guys, after a wipe, let me go ahead and bring you in a little bit closer. After a wipe, we still see the scratches here a little bit. So uh, it's somewhere over there. This one, again, I can't really see unless I'm in the right light. Oh yeah, right over there. So that one's still there. And then this one, I bet you could probably still capture it on camera. This one is right here, right there. So let's see if I could zoom in a little bit more. Yeah, that one is slightly visible. Yep, right over there. So it definitely kind of um, made them show a little bit less, but I'm gonna give it one more pass and, uh, and see what we can do here. All right, so after a second pass and putting it on a little bit of a stronger uh, speed, uh, we can still see the scratch there slightly, but definitely shows a little bit less. So I'll put a before and after right there on screen so you guys could see. You guys tell me if you could see the difference. I really don't think that the camera does it justice, but it definitely shows a little bit less and it's smoother. So I'll take it. All right, guys. So I know that that wasn't the best outcome, but I hope you guys learned something from this video, how to get a more affordable orbital polisher uh, and how to modify it in order to have it perform a little bit better. And if you guys have a better setting than me to do it, if you have a garage, if you have the proper lighting on top, in order to see those swarm marks and all the imperfections on the vehicle's paint, then you're in good shape. You're a lot better set up than I am, and you can definitely see some better results. All right, guys, that does it for this video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care now. Peace.